Hey everyone, George, and welcome back to The Art of Water. Um, today we're going to be doing a bit of research on a species that I am not that familiar with and want to know a little bit more about so that I can make an informed decision as to whether or not this particular species is uh, something that I would like to have uh, for my uh, uh, fish room. Anyways, um, the species is not totally unique to me in the sense that I have had this particular fish once before, but it, I didn't do very well with it because I was uh, new to the, the hobby. Oop, let me get out of that light there. That wasn't a good deal. Anyways, I was new to the hobby and I just really didn't know much about uh, the uh, scarlet baddis. Now, the reason why I want to get back into um, having these particular fish in my tank, raising them and uh, working with them is because I was not successful with them before and I still find them extremely intriguing. And uh, let me turn some light on behind me here. I'm uh, kind of doing this without a tripod today, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit here and uh, give me uh, a little bit of grace on uh, working with me here. Anyways, the scarlet baddis, uh, the reason why I, I'm, I'm talking about them is because I, I did have a situation where about three years ago, Maybe it wasn't three years ago. I think it was maybe two years ago now that I think about it. A friend of mine gave me four of these, uh, two males, two females. And I really, uh, you know, thought that I was going to have success in raising them. They were such beautiful little fish and very, very unique in so many ways. Uh, they have a lot more personality than most fish. It's kind of like uh, the betta. You know, how the betta fish has uh, an incredible personality, many of them, and uh, we don't really know why. Uh, some fish, you know, sort of have this look in their eye or this ability to sort of grasp the uh, things around them and uh, um, sort of interact with their environment. Anyways, I had uh, four of these little guys, and I lost them one by one because they starved to death. A friend of mine uh, really didn't tell me much about their feeding habits and what was required. And basically what happened to me is I uh, tried them on flake food, could never, ever get them to, um, to get off uh, live food uh, and on to something that I was willing to... Um, you know, put the work into uh, live food for me with my schedule, my travel and everything else is just not a great idea because I don't have the ability to um, raise brine shrimp. I don't have the ability to run out and get fresh uh, black worms or red worms or any of that stuff on a daily basis or uh, on a weekly basis. Now, I know that many of the other fish in my, my, um, uh, aquariums in my fish room here would benefit by more live food. Uh, I have used a lot of frozen and uh, that has worked really well, but I still have never been able to get the scarlet baddest to actually wean off from live food and take um, either frozen food and uh, flake or any other types of foods that are out there because, uh, you know, whenever I've seen them with other people, they've been successful at doing that. But I, like I said, I was given these four scarlet baddis uh, by a friend who uh, just basically thought they would be a great uh, addition to my uh, my tank. And uh, as I said, I was not very successful with the outcome of that. Anyways, uh, if anybody knows more about the Scarlet Baddest, I would certainly love to talk to you about it. I would love to have some comments regarding them and uh, what you can do to sort of wean them from live food to flake or to frozen foods. I don't mind frozen foods. I I have several of my fish that I feed frozen foods to just to keep them uh, with a somewhat um, mixed um, 
what am I trying to say? A, a sort of a mixed diet uh, to keep them healthy. But at the same time, um, I don't have the time in my lifestyle to sort of go out there and uh, promote uh, the idea that Scarlet Battis is a good addition to anyone's uh, tank, whether it be nano tanks or whatever, uh, without knowing that these fish can be successfully weaned from <laughs> um, basically uh, live food to something that most of us have time for or have on hand already. And uh, anyways, if anybody has information on that, wants to leave me a comment and uh, uh, give me some information about uh, what your uh, abilities were to wean them from live food to flake or frozen foods. Uh, I would love to know how that's done. I just don't want to get some more of these fish uh, and uh, not be successful. I, I don't like seeing fish uh, just sort of wilt away and not do well because I haven't got the ability to take care of them in the way that they need to be cared for. So uh, again, uh, leave me some comments, uh, some information about Scarlet Battis for those of you out there that are, uh, you know, raising Battis, Scarlet Battis right now and are successful with them and are using uh, something other than live foods or uh, uh, just using frozen foods and flake foods. I would really love to know how you were successful at doing that, number one, and number two, I would like to uh, get some information from you because I plan on setting up a tank. I've got a tank right now that's just cycled within the last couple of weeks. And um, I don't uh, really plan on putting anything in there except for Scarlet Battis. I'm going to do a little bit more research on the male to female ratio, uh, their needs, and so forth, and uh, again, uh, if I can get them off um, any kind of uh, uh, live foods and be successful with raising them in a tank that uh, does not uh, need that kind of attention, uh, I would really love to be able to talk with you, get comments, and uh, have some really good instruction as to what the uh, best way to do that is. Anyways, the tank that I'm planning on putting them in is a tank that, like I said, is just cycled uh, within the last few weeks. I do have some fish in there right now. I'm going to walk in here and uh, sort of uh, flip the camera around and uh, see if we can um, talk about this a little bit more. And... I don't even know how to flip this camera around. I put iOS 13 on here the other day, and uh, ever since then, I'm not really good at um, figuring out how to flip the phone back around. Anyways, this is the tank that I'm talking about right here, and uh, this is a five-gallon Aquatop. Uh, it's a great tank. Right now, I do have some Rummy Nose Tetras in here, and uh, they're doing really, really well. Uh, I have just a, a school of about 12 in here. And I do have uh, also uh, some um, autosynclids in here just for algae purposes. I haven't had any algae issues, but I always try to stay ahead of that. And uh, really, you know, scrub my uh, tanks down as best I can and uh, clean them you know, doing water changes regularly, regardless of whether the tank is cycled or not cycled, you know, trying to do a quarter water change one week and then a half water change the following week and just keep rotating it back and forth that way. So this is the tank that I'm thinking about putting them in. I, uh, I'm not sure if I will leave the landscaping the way it is right now. It's not a bad scape, but uh, I could use a little bit more uh, plants down in the frontal area here. These rummy nose are really skittish fish. I was really surprised at how how skittish they really are. But uh, you know, putting some uh, some uh, uh, plants in the foreground area here that are low growing plants, uh, carpet plants, 
I would really love to be able to do that and uh, uh, have a few more hiding spots for the scarlet baddis. I think I might do that over the next couple of days. And uh, if anybody has any ideas, I'm going to flip it back around and it's going to be about me again. Anyway, if you do have any ideas on that, um, I would sure appreciate any information that you might have. Um, and uh, send that to me, make a comment on it, uh, or anything else uh, that I have put out there as far as videos, and you want to make a comment on those videos, I would be absolutely, uh, you know, ecstatic to talk to you about any of that stuff. So, Anyways, uh, what I did want to do is update you on one tank that I have had a little bit of trouble with and it is absolutely turned around and doing really well. And uh, it's actually, I get a lot of comments on this particular tank just because it is a beautiful tank and it does sit in my office, which is also my fish room. And uh, I think that if you... If you see this tank, you're going to recognize it right off the bat. Uh, this is the tank that I have basically a school of about 10 cardinal tetras. And I do have six neon green rasporas that have been in here for about a month and a half now. And they're just doing fantastic. Uh, the tank is absolutely crystal clear. No algae issues whatsoever. Uh, I've got it, you know, planted as heavily as I think it needs to be. And again, doing water changes a quarter a week and then a half the following week. And uh, this is the other tank that uh, I would like to sort of, uh, this is an Aquatop uh, five gallon as well. So this is a tank that I would um, consider using for the Bata. If uh, I thought that I could catch all these guys without destroying the tank. But either way, the bottom line is this is the kind of tank that I'm going to be using. And uh, it's been a great tank. Um, I love these Aquatop uh, 5 gallons here with these amazing little filtration systems that are on the back. Uh, that sort of hang off the backs where you can get to them and clean them. And... Uh, you know, the, the lighting in here uh, is about a par 60 to 68 on any given time when I have uh, sort of looked at it and uh, taken, uh, you know, a measurement on light. Uh, that's about what I come up with. Um, and that has a lot to do, obviously, with the plants that are growing on the top here. Um, it is important to know that, you know, uh, this dog's ward is really a fast growing plant and you got to cull it and, uh, you know, uh, get some of that out of there and put it in other tanks or give it to a friend or whatever, uh, as much as you can, because within a couple of weeks, it really, uh, can pretty much take over the top of it. So in order for light to get down in there, um, for, you know, the reasons of having uh, the other plants do well. All the plants in here really are medium to low requirements. So they're not anything that uh, I can't, uh, you know, grow with this particular light and do well with. Now, I don't have a CO2 set up on this. I'm trying to go non-CO2 on a lot of my... Uh, my uh, um, nano tanks right now because there are so many people that I talk to that are just saying if you really plant the tank heavily and uh, you do that from the time that you set it up you really can get rid of any problems with uh, algae uh, whatever those problems might be and just have a beautiful tank this tank is pristine and beautiful and you know, all the tanks around my my uh, office area are too. This guy here is a five gallon, and it is also a species tank. Basically what I have in here, other than two autosynclids, are some sparkling dwarf grommies. And I just love these little guys because they do make a lot of noise. Uh, they've got kind of a little croaking sound that they make. The two males 
coming close to each other and competing with the the two females that are in here. Uh, it, it's 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 very interesting to listen to and uh, fun uh, to say the least to uh, to um, really kind of watch and interact with these guys. They've been in here now for a little over a year and a half. This is a great tank for them. As you can see, it's uh, pretty heavily planted. I don't have a lot of carpeting plants in here. I really didn't want that because uh, looking at the sparkling grommy, dwarf grommy, uh, I find that uh, they like a lot of hiding places. They're a little bit of a shy fish, but if you can keep everything in a center island type situation, they seem to do really well. Now, pH on this tank is around 6.5 to 7, depending on uh, the readings that I get. It's pretty consistently right around 6.8. Um, and uh, everything else, water parameters wise or whatever, is just absolutely fantastic. Going over to this tank here, this is my tank that has uh, some rainbows in here, some uh, Illuminati's, and also some uh, um, Chili Raspora. Now, I did have a recent situation where I lost three of my Chili Rasporas. Somehow I had filled the tank above this line right here. There is in the back a, uh, uh, a graded filter system back there that's a three stage that uh, somehow when I had the little ones in there, these were all fry when I put them in here, they got into that back area and uh, they just didn't do well, obviously. So that was my bad and uh, a lesson learned on that. But uh, the Illuminati, um, um, are doing really, really, really well in here. There's four of them. I'm going to probably take the chilies out of here and move them to another tank. But this is a, a, another example of a tank that is so low maintenance because I have so many plants in here. And I, what I do is I basically take the cuttings off. These plants within two weeks will be way up here again. And uh, what I do is I take the tops off them and I push them down into the soil and get new growth going all the time. And uh, it's just a really heavily planted tank and algae just does not stand a chance in here. Again, no CO2, just really the water changes and the minerals and uh, you know the ferts. Uh, I do use some fertilizers in here. I put a squirt in all of my tanks every couple of days. I think we over fertilize on many. This particular tank here is also, uh, this is not an aqua top. This is a, a cobalt. Uh, this is like a 5.7 gallon, but this is species tank as well. It's pretty much uh, just Ember Tetras. I have 15 of them in here. They sort of hang out in the back. Uh, feeding time is just an absolute crazy time because they really do uh, love to eat and uh, other than some auto cichlids in here again this is a species tank as well it's pretty heavily planted maybe not as much as uh, uh, some of the carpet plants uh, and that kind of thing but there are some crypts in here there are uh, petite uh, uh, nana in here uh, I've got three or four of those up in the wooded area here and again, there's a couple other plants in here that I don't know what they are exactly, but the the tank's just doing absolutely fabulous. These guys have uh, no issues whatsoever. And uh, down here, this is just basically a tank that's five gallons that has nothing but a betta fish in here. As you can see, He's a Dumbo, but he's so unusual. I had to pick him up last week. I did make a video about that if you want to go back and look at my videos. But he's got absolutely fabulous coloring. He's a maroon, sort of rusty maroon sort of fish with the white uh, uh, forefins here and just a little bit of white around the tips and the edges of his tail and his dorsal. And he has these extremely unusual white lips, which I think are pretty cool. But uh, I don't have a filtration system in here, and I don't know if I will put one in here because he's doing really well making bubble nest. I do have a heater, of course, because I know that 
with bettas uh, that they do move around and they do a lot better if they do have a heater in there. And I change the water in here a couple of times a week, about 50%. This is a little different than my other setups where uh, I do do a little bit more water changes in here just to make sure that he's got a perfectly clean environment. Uh, when I do water changes on all of mine, I do use Seachem Prime. I also use Seachem's, um, oh, I'm trying to remember. It's, um, well, let, let's uh, take a walk here and uh, see what the product is that I am using here. I am basically, I'm gonna turn some light on here, basically using Seachem Stability and Seachem Prime. Both of these are absolutely fantastic products, uh, you know, you, for dechlorinization. You also get a balance of uh, trace elements. You also get a balance of keeping the, um, the uh, ammonia down with this. And then the stability, whenever you're doing a 50% water change, you add just a quarter of a cap full of that into a five gallon situation. And, uh, these products uh, have been with me for a long time. I'm not pushing uh, the products uh, so that people will uh, buy them. I'm just telling you my experience with them has been fantastic, and I hope that you'll go out and uh, use them as well because uh, Seachem goes out of their way to put out some superior products out there uh, in every way, shape, or form that I can think of. And... Uh, I, I just want to give a shout out to them, even though I'm not, uh, like I said, uh, uh, giving them any kind of an endorsement other than, you know, my verbal uh, endorsement as what my experiences have been with these products. So anyways, getting back to uh, talking about, um, you know, Scarlet Battis, if anyone can give me some information on Scarlet Battis and, and knows about them to the point where... Uh, you feel confident in really um, putting yourself out there to give me that uh, information. I would sure appreciate it. Anyways, George with The Art of Water. And uh, I know I showed you my face. I put some sunglasses on here because uh, people are going to know me and I really don't want to get into all of that. Uh, as I have said on many occasions, uh, you know, I'm in the music business and uh I would like it if people uh, would know me for uh, this particular hobby that I'm I'm uh, sort of pushing right now. And um, I would like just some really nice information coming back to me um, about uh, the Scarlet Battis and uh, what you might recommend if you've had experience with these particular fish. Send me some comments or information about them that will help me to make sure that when I get these fish, which I've pretty much got them coming in the mail at this point, so uh, there really isn't anything I can do other than uh, try to ask for uh, information that's gonna be really helpful to me. Anyways, please leave your, your comments, uh, subscribe, give me a thumbs up on this video, and if you have any questions, Leave them on the con in the comments box. Uh, that are, I don't care if they're even related to the video or not. Anything you want to know or ask me, I'm certainly uh, available and willing to talk with you about that. So anyways, George with The Art of Water. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care.